Hey guys, Chauncey Phillips here in my video talking about my picks for the best and worst horror movie remakes. Now there's some movies that I kind of didn't even put in this list that are kind of horror movie remakes that kind of just exist. They're not ones that I would say are like the worst. They're not ones that I say were the best in any way. They're not ones that I really like that much. They're just kind of like they just exist. Like for example, like a movie like Carrie, I kind of liked it sort of it's not the worst or a movie like when a stranger calls like i really only ever watched that one time so there's some of those kind of ones that just sort of like they were just existed like the rob zombies halloween remake i, I don't even know how i feel about that one like i like the beginning of that movie but then that's kind of it like the first 30 minutes was kind of cool but then other than that and like ken forey getting killed in that in the bathroom and like some of those scenes i kind of liked but overall i didn't really like them very much but they i, I wouldn't say they're like the worst like i said they just sort of exist out there and like let me know how you kind of feel and like what some of your like picks would be below for you know the best the worst and ones you kind of would say just kind of exist as remakes now the first one here i picked is probably i really feel like probably one of the top best harmony remakes of all of them and one of the ones that i felt was like very successful and really liked this one a lot and this is you know the dawn of the dead remake and what i liked about this one was they didn't just kind of like try and copy the whole movie, you know, and they actually added a bunch of different more, you know, more characters to the film. It wasn't just the three characters from the original film. It was like a whole lot more added to this. And I don't know, they, you know, they, of course they kept it in the mall. And I actually like this mall setting. It was a very different kind of mall, you know, much more modern type mall. I really like Ving Rhames in this, and I really like, too, like I said, there was just so many different characters, and some of them had, like, weird kind of quirks to them, and there was all these kind of subplots of stuff going on with the one pregnant, and all these kind of things happening, and I don't know, I just really like this one. I like the whole the whole vibe to this, and always kind of wish they made an actual sequel to this movie. You know, they never did make, like, a real sequel, and it was set up for one, but I don't know what happened. There never ended up being one. The next one here that I would pick and this is a, this is a remake. Some people don't even know this one is a remake. And I think I saw the movie years ago. But since I'm talking about remakes that I would say are really good remakes, I have to pick this one. This is actually, too, one of my favorite movies. I absolutely love this movie. The music in this movie. You know, David Bowie did the music in this. And it's just such cool music. And Malcolm McDowell is great in this movie. And it's, you know, cat people. And, you know, I really have to, like I said, this is definitely one of my top favorite movies. There's just something about this movie, the whole vibe to this. And it just has, like, the way the movie flows with the music and everything. It's just such a great movie. If you guys haven't seen this one, you definitely have to watch this film. Like, it's basically about this girl who is, like, dis discovers that she is, like, a cat. And, like, she's, like, a panther. It's a very odd concept, the whole thing. And it's, like, an erotic film and everything. But just very well done. I like love the whole vibe to this film. The next one, this is actually a, you don't hear people talk about this one that often you know it stars the late Anton Yelchin who's like one of those actors I absolutely loved and was like I was just so sad about you know how he died and everything because like I was a huge fan of him and you know Green Room which he did right before he passed away was such a great movie and this is a movie you know which has you know Christopher Mintz Plaza, you know, McLovin in this as well. And I always like this remake. And you don't hear people talk about this too often. And it's the Fright Night remake. And this was actually a pretty good remake. And it was, it, you know, it was very similar to the original. But they added a whole bunch of different stuff. And added more of, like, the one character being more of, like, a magician and stuff like that to this one. But I don't know. I thought this one was actually one of the better, you know, uh, remakes. And actually had... Because I saw this one in 3D as well. I don't have a 3D TV anymore, but I do remember this one actually was one of those movies that actually looked pretty good in 3D. I, I feel like right now 3D TVs are kind of out. Because I just got 4K, and they don't talk about 3D as much anymore. You still can see that in theaters, but it's kind of gone away a little bit. The next one here, and this, for some reason, I remember when I ordered this on Amazon, they sent me, like, the UK edition of this. But, you know, this was before I was getting a lot of, you know, other region stuff. But this is region-free, but, like, a lot of the features I remember when I played this years ago didn't work for some reason. Because I think they were in PAL, and there was, like, a problem with that. At some point, I need to buy the US version of this movie. This is, you know, the Hills Have Eyes remake. This is another one which I really do think is such a great, you know, horror remake. And they changed so much more to this. It's a much more brutal movie. The original film was very brutal, but it was kind of like, kind of reserved and held back with it. It wasn't, at the time, they weren't like going for it the way this one went for like super ultra violence and just intense sequences. And also... This one added a whole lot of stuff with like the nuclear testing and the abandoned nuclear houses and stuff like that, where they were kind of would blow up and test bombs on and stuff. And I like that aspect to this one. And this one is actually 
as much as I love the original one, this one can kind of hold up against it, and it's, I would say, just as good. It really is pretty much tied with the original. Of course, you know, the original, you know, has Michael Berryman, and I really did think they should have put Michael Berryman in this one. Because like when I, you think of Hills Have Eyes, he is so much like the like the look of you know the, the Pluto character, and he just like really fits in this world, and it's kind of like you know oh talk about like, with a Nightmare on Elm Street remake, it was kind of like you know you can't really do these kind of movies without you know a certain person in them, it just doesn't feel the same, and I do think he should have been in this one. The next one here, and this one I haven't actually not opened this one, but I've seen this one many times, and it actually is a very creepy movie, and this is one of those ones that's one of the best ones, but like you know like the lower or tier of the best and this is the grudge remake and i actually did like this one and i remember the stuff on the tv and the stuff like 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 the cameras and stuff of her in the hallway and stuff this is actually a very creepy movie a lot of these you know asian remake horror movies you know american versions of the asian remake horror movies really creep me out the next one here and this one, I almost like this one in some weird way better than the original. You know, the original is such a great movie, but there's something about this one. I, when I think about, like, this movie, I kind of like to watch this one more. You know, and I don't know why. I just, I, I really like this. I like, um, you know, Tony Todd this so much. And this is, you know, the Nightmare, uh, I mean, the Night of the Living Dead remake. That Tom Savini actually, you know, uh, you know, directed this one. George Romero produced this one. This was almost made too because there was always like a problem with the copyright of the original movie, and George Romero like never really made any money off of that because it ended up in the public domain because they forgot to put like a copyright at the end of the movie. So he kind of made this and produced, you know, produced this one to kind of like actually finally make some movie off of the Night of the Living Dead story in the film. But for a remake, this was very, very similar. It was pretty much like the same exact story. They added a couple stuff and it's a, you know, a little more violent and stuff. But I actually always really liked this one. And this release too, there's a uh, edition of this from Twilight Time, but this is the, you know, um, the version from um, Australia, and this version though is region free. Uh, the next one here, and this is one, another one people don't talk about very much at all. Uh, the original one I think is going to be coming out soon at some point from Scream Factory with Ben, which bo both of them have never been on DVD ever. And I don't even think they've been on DVD anywhere in any country as far as I know. I don't think either of them have. There's been lots of bootlegs. But this is, like I said, one you never hear anyone talk about. Hopefully it gets a Blu-ray release. It'll probably be one of those Burn on, De Burn on Demand or, you know, uh, Manufacturing Demand ones. But it's the Crispin Glover film, Willard. And I don't know, I always liked this one. I, d I always did wish, though, they would release at some point. I don't think they ever will, though, was the R-rated cut. Because this movie was cut down. This was kind of a, around the time, too, when they were always kind of cutting movies for P to be PG-13. Now R-rated horror has kind of gotten big again, and in the last couple of years I feel like they're not as worried about making, you know, the studios are not as worried about making films PG-13 as much, because they kind of know people are going to see them either way, so they kind of are not doing this cutting them down as much. Like, this is one of those movies that for like really never should have been cut down, because like, it was one of those films where you're going to see it, or you're going to see it, you know what I mean? But this is basically though about, you know, Chris McGlover play playing Willard, and he's a guy that, you know, is obsessed with, um, you know, these rats, and he's always talking to his, you know, his rats, and he has this bad relationship with his mother, and it's like, he's basically just freaking out and losing, and Crispin Glover really was over the top in this movie, but over the top in a very cool way, and he made the music video for this as well, you know, the song Ben. I don't know, I just, I always like this one. This one here is another one of my picks for my, one of my favorite. This is one of the, one of those movies too, I remember, like, creeped me out so much when I first saw this. I think I saw this in theaters probably like two or three times. There's very few movies I've seen in theaters a couple times like this napoleon dynamite i saw that in theaters probably like six times i don't know what i was doing but i really like that movie i saw like nacho libre in theaters a couple of times um but this one is you know the ring and this is like that weird edition you don't see very much at all one of the best buy exclusive ones pretty sure this you know one with this slip cover is out of print but, you know, this one, very, very creepy movie. They're doing a new Ring film, which I don't even think I've looked at the trailer for it yet. I kind of wanted to kind of wait till I saw it in theaters. I know it got, you know, the trailer in theaters, but I know it got delayed at some point. I think it's coming out sometime next year, though. But always really like this one about, you know, the videotape. If you watch it, you die in seven days, and unless you make somebody else watch it. I don't know. I just always really like this movie very much, so creep me out. This is one where they, you know, it's a remake, but they kind of... um 
change it around so much and is much more brutal and definitely one of my favorite Elijah Wood movies in, you know, in the last like 10 years. And I like him in horror movies, you know, and I, you know, seen a lot of interviews, read a lot of interviews with him talking about how he loves horror movies and like weirder things and stuff like that. And that was why he wanted to do this. And he produces a lot of horror films as well, but this is the Maniac remake, which really like this one. And like, I like too, that it was like all done from his point of view. So the whole movie, you know, he's like the killer and it's going around killing people and it's all from his perspective. And like, when you see him like in the mirror, it's like through his eyes looking himself in the mirror and they did a really good job kind of hiding the camera and like the whole way it was done and I like too because like Eliza Wood's like the last person you would expect to be like a killer and I kind of like that they that he's not really the typical you know weird looking guy or creepy person or something like that he's like the kind of guy you wouldn't expect to come after you and kill you so I kind of like that they really changed this around because the original actor from the original film you know, he kind of looks like he's up to no good. And I always loved that guy. But like this, you know, Liza Wood doesn't have that kind of look. The next one here, and this is actually, I actually liked all the sequels to this as well. I know they aren't really great, but this is the, you know, I Spit on Your Grave remake. And I know a lot of people, I, I, I think people like this one. They didn't like the sequels that much. Like I said, I kind of like them though, to be honest. But this is the I Spit on Your Grave remake. And, um, I don't love the original one. The original was really cool for like that one scene in the bathtub and like other than that, but it didn't really have any music. I think it was all kind of silent and I kind of like wish it had music to it and stuff and it's cool, but I don't absolutely love the original one. The, um, there's going to be a new, like, I think it's a, a, a direct sequel to the original movie. You know, Camille Keaton has come back to do it and it's like, I think, I don't know when it's coming out, but I think it's like I Spit on Your Grave Zero or something like that. I know it's like a, as far as I'm totally getting that wrong, I'm pretty sure though there is like a new sequel though that's coming out at some point. This is another one I'd say is one of the definitely, the you know, these are still the top ones, but this is one of the, like the high top ones. Um, also one of those movies I love to watch and definitely my favorite Cron David Cronenberg movie. And hopefully this one gets a Scream Factory release at some point with a bunch of features and stuff. And this is David Cronenberg's The Fly starring, you know, Gina Davis and Jeff Goldblum. This is, I think, my favorite Jeff Goldblum role. Like, he was so good in this movie. This is such a sad movie. The movie just plays so depressing. There's a lot of different... Um, you know, there's a couple things that were deleted and stuff from this. And at some point, it would be kind of cool if they did like a extended cut or something like this of this film. I actually like the sequel to this as well with Eric Stoltz. That was, it was like no one, a lot of people didn't like that one. But I I think I saw that sequel as a kid. So I always kind of liked that sequel, even though I know it really wasn't great. But this one is basically though about, you know, Jeff Goldblum's character, if you don't know, he like invents this, you know, machine where he can teleport between them. And what ends up happening is a fly ends up in there with him and he doesn't know it and he gets crossed with a fly and he starts like changing and the, all these terrible things start to happen to him the next one here for one of the best ones is the evil dead remake and some people didn't love this movie i really thought this was a great remake i do it's a shame though that they haven't actually done the sequels to this because this was supposed to be see you know there's this was set up to have actually a series of these but i don't know what happened i i don't think it's going to happen now there's even supposed to be an uncut edition of this and I think like the director was like trying to do a petition or something like that to get, you know, get people interested. So he had the time to, you know, cut, cut together an uncut edition of this. Would be cool if they did that. But like I said, I like this one, you know, it's like people trapped in the cabin and, you know, what ends up happening to them. But I don't know. I like this one a lot. And then the last one here for the best. Now, and then we're going to get on to the worst ones. And some of them, like I said, are okay. But like they are, have like some redeeming aspects to them. Uh, the next one, like the last one though for best is the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And I even, I didn't used to like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the, the prequel, the one that was before this. You know, I didn't use, like love it that much. But now I kind of like it a lot, a, a lot more. But this one actually... You know, it's a much more... The original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, a lot of people think that it's, like, super, super violent and gory. Like, if they're, like, not, like... I, I don't know. People kind of think that. But it's actually was just on the cuff of being rated PG. I remember reading all that about it. And it really isn't... It's more just you know, what's happening, the sequel, you know, this part two to it really went crazy and over the top and everything. But the original one really wasn't super gory or anything like that. This, on the other hand, went for it with the gore and it was actually a pretty good remake. 
I like it. I like Jessica Biel in this movie. I like Ari Emery though. Ari Emery like really steals the show as like the terrible sheriff in this movie. I don't know. This one to me though is is really was great. Let me know though what you guys think of the ones that I picked for best and what your opinions are of them. Now I'm going to talk about the ones that are the worst. Um, this one though, it's not like the worst, but I don't really like it. The only thing I liked about this is now this is the collection that has in here though the Texas. I mean the Friday the Thirteenth uh, remake in here. I don't have the actual disc anymore though, because I had you know I have them all in this set. This is out of print now. This one, if you guys ever come across this one, definitely get it if you can get it cheap, because it's all over the place with prices. But the the sequel to this, I mean the remake of this, I only liked the opening. I felt like the opening twenty minutes were like really felt like a Friday the Thirteenth kind of cool movie, and then after that it was like okay, I can kind of turn this off now. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know if you guys kind of felt the same way, but there's something really cool about the first 20 minutes. It felt like a real Friday the 13th movie, and then it just sort of became like, okay, I'm, I'm done with this. I don't really like... And I only ever watched this back... I mean, like, maybe watch this movie twice. It just... I, I don't know. I did not love it. This one, though, is definitely the worst. This is like a terrible movie. Why I why I have this, I just have it to have next to the original one. Like, a lot of these ones, you just kind of have to have them because you have the original ones. This was awful, though, this Day of the Dead remake. And it was really a name-only remake. It was just a terrible mess. It was Nick Cannon and Mina Savari in it. But, you know, they were fine. But this was just a disaster movie. And this was that company that was... I think it was that company that was, like, making a lot of weird remakes. Like, they made Creepshow 3... They made Day of the Dead Part 2, and, like, they kind of had the rights to make things. I think, I don't know if they were involved in this one or not, but I know this was, like, the time when they were messing with, like, a lot of George Romero stuff, but this was just bad. This one here, I, you know, I like aspects of this one, but every time I've tried to watch it again, I kind of watch a little bit of it, and I get tired of it. And this was the ba uh, the Black Christmas remake. This is another hard-to-find Blu-ray one. If you ever, guys ever come across this one, it's a Canadian release. Definitely get this one, though. You know, if you can get it for cheap, but this you don't you don't see this one very often, and I I don't even know if this one has the uncut version of it or not on here, um, but you know this was just this has you know Michelle Trentenbaum you know Trentenbaum you know who's from Harry the Spy and a bunch of different stuff, but I don't know this was just not was not great, uh, this one really was bad. I mean like I liked um, like the Deputy Winston character a little bit. And, like, I liked, like, some of the gore. Like, they kind of went more extreme in a couple aspects of this. But overall, this was such a misfire. You know, I kind of would rather they just continue on with the sequels. Because I, I liked Part 2, even though it was a, it, people didn't like it very much. Because it was kind of a mess. And I liked Part 3. I liked Sean Astin's character. And, you know, I re really wanted to see what happened to his character. And I don't think they're even going to make more sequels. But this is, you know, the Cabin Fever remake. I don't know. This just, to me, really, really was not great at all. And sort of like, I don't know. It's just, I don't know. I don't, and it was one of those sort of shot for shot ones, like script, like line for line for the most part with some things added here and there. But the original one, to me, I always loved that. And I just, I don't know. It was like, why are you making it like this? If you're going to remake it, like really change it around a lot. But it was like the same thing again. This one, I liked the main actress in this and I liked... You know, the actor, you know, um, you know, he was like play already the strongest man in the world, Toby Huss. He was in this one, but it did not have the effect or feel in any way of the original movie. The original movie, I remember I had to pause it a couple times and leave. It was like really bothering me because I really have a hard time with like violence against women type movies like that are like really intense like that. And the original one was really, really bothering me bad. Like I've only ever really watched it one time because it was just really hard to watch. But this is, you know, the Martyrs remake. This one, like it didn't have the same effect. They toned it down because they were afraid of going for it with this movie. Like I said, the main actress was okay. There was aspects of it that were all right, but it really was a misfire. It just really was not great. This one, you know, only ever watched this once. I got this at Blockbuster when they were, you know, every when they were closing down. So I got it for like a dollar. And you know, I love the original one. It was actually filmed. It used to be, you know, I'm from Maryland, and I was like, remember actually seeing the place where they filmed this, the original location of House of Sorority Hill. So I kind of always like looked at it because they had this weird lake thing in the front, this kind of pool thing in the front. I mean, I don't know. I always remembered seeing that building, and I drove by it. I can't remember where it was, but I know I had saw it a couple different times. But this one. This really was a mess. And this is, you know, the Sorority Row me remake. You know, you can, it's watchable, but it was in no way a good remake whatsoever. Uh, this one, 
I, I really dislike this remake. It was, I, I like the one actor, you know, um, I can't remember his name offhand, but, you know, he was in, you know, uh, Island of Dr. Rowe, um, which I like, which I should have probably put that in here for best remake because I forgot to get it. But Island of Dr. Moreau, I like that movie. A lot of people hate that movie, but I always kind of like that. It's not exactly horror. It's more science fiction. But this is the Omen uh, remake. This is not, the, this is, you know, the remake of the first movie with Julia Stiles. I did not like that movie. Like, I remember seeing it in theaters. And I'm like, I didn't like that movie. It was, it was just not great at all. It, like, it didn't, and this one, this this is like famous for like how bad it was and cringy some of the stuff was like talking about the bees and it lost all the like erotic aspects the original had and all the sex aspects to it and it's like it became like this totally different movie and this was the you know the Nicolas Cage from the he stars in the Wicker Man remake this was just kind of weird and they kind of made it like him like a commune of women and stuff and Another one I only ever watched one time. You know, the bees thing, not the bees, is like a famous thing. But this was a bad, bad remake. And this is probably the ultimate piece of crap remake. I mean, this is absolutely horrifically bad. And you can't... You know, Robert England makes this character. And this is the most unwatchable turd remake. They're really one of the top worst of all time. I just don't like this movie. And this was the Nightmare on Elm Street one. Of course I had to have it. It was like only a dollar when I got it. This is not, it was not the pre-owned nine dollars. It was one I got for a dollar. But there's something about this whole thing. This did not work. And this was them trying to reinvent the thing. And you know, if this worked, I think by now there probably would have been, because this was like in 2010, by now there probably would have been like three other ones of these, at least two other sequels to this film, but just not a good reboot to the whole thing and didn't work. Um, you know, this is one of, this is Rooney Mara's first movie. Rooney Mara was good in this. I mean, one of her first, one of her earlier movies, but just, at, you know, and I like Thomas Decker. I like the people in this. I just did not like this remake. Uh, this one is one of the worst, but I actually really love this movie, but I can't say it's one of the best remakes. It's kind of like a middle ground one that I, did, I wanted to include just because I like it, even though it's like, you have to kind of be in the mood to sit through it though, because it's got a lot of kind of crappy parts in it. And I have to be honest, I don't mind Paris Hilton as an actress. I never minded her acting. I think for horror movies and stuff like this, she actually fit okay. And this was like during the time when she was really popular with, you know, the surreal, I mean, the simple life which I watched all of those, but like, um, I think that was, yeah, the simple life, but this, you know, this is the house of wax remake. Um, you know, Lisa, Eliza Cuth Cuthbert, Cuthbert was in this one as well. Um, I like this one though, but it's not, it's bad though. I know it's a bad movie, but it's kind of a fun, bad movie. And I like it kind of, it's kind of a fun thing to watch. And I liked, like, it was done over the top. The acting was kind of all over the place with it. But there was some cool stuff when they were, like, the characters, when they were, like, turned into wax and the weird stuff they were doing. Um, I don't know. Another one, I almost feel like they almost one day might make another remake to this movie. The original film was such a cool Vincent Price movie. Probably one of my favorite Vincent Price movies to watch. And I, I loved it ever since I was a kid. But like I said, this one is, like, you know, a best worst kind of one. And the last one for worst, this one I always disliked. This one I disliked this one ever since I saw it. Um, I haven't ever e I've even watched this unrated one, so I don't know if it's any better for the blood and stuff. Because this was a movie that was PG-13 when this went to theaters. And this is the Prom Night remake, which, you know, originally starred Jamie Lee Curtis, which was a great movie about, in the beginning of the movie, this one kid gets killed, and then someone's coming back, and the people that were responsible for this accident, this kid that, that died, come back and, they, you know, start picking them off and killing them before they can get to prom or, like, around that time. That's sort of what it was. This has Brittany Snow in this it's kind of them like going there and who else was in this movie? I think it was just Brittany Snow as far as I can remember. Jonathan, yeah, I don't, yeah, I think, I think, yeah, Iris Elba was in this movie too. This was one of his earlier films, but this is really bad. This is kind of embarrassing and even the like the blood and stuff, it was like someone kind of got stabbed and you just saw like a little thing. It was like CGI'd in later and stuff. And I remember watching this in theaters like, ugh, this is just bad. And like, I just knew how, how horrific this was. But like I said, this is my picks of the best and worst. And like I said, movies like Carrie and Halloween, I like them, but I don't really... I don't know where they kind of stand, and almost House of Wax, I didn't know where it standed, but I wanted to talk about it and kind of put it in here, because it is, I know it's terrible, but it's kind of like a good terrible that you can watch. But anyway, though, guys, below, let me know your picks for the best and worst. I'd love to hear what you guys think, any ones you guys thought I missed. Anyway, though, guys, thanks again for watching, subscribing, and I'll see you guys later.